after I left uh, graduate school, for a period of 10 years, I focused most of my musical energy on writing music for small uh, ensembles, ensembles that have very specialized and have very uh, specific skills playing new music. In 1979, I wrote After Tones of Infinity, which was my first major orchestral piece. And after the experience of, of hearing that work, I knew that I wanted to commit myself to writing uh, for the orchestra. And I have the kind of musical imagination, I guess, that seems to inhabit uh, this really wonderfully, endlessly, sonically uh, inviting uh, world of, of orchestral possibilities. And I, I never cease to um, be interested in exploring those possibilities in, in my own work. And I've had the great good fortune of working with really world-class orchestras and, and musicians who uh, can take my music and really make it co come alive. So for about 25 years, the orchestra has been largely where I've found my, my home. In dealing with this particular project that involves smaller ensembles, uh, the chamber orchestras in many cases, what interests me most specifically about these smaller ensembles is the, the clarity and the kind of transparency of sound that you can create with a smaller group of musicians. Things come out in a much more kind of direct and luminous way than when you amass 98 or 110 musicians. So I'm very much interested in, in writing today a very direct and expressive and clear music. And it seems to me that the chamber orchestra is that perfect vehicle and community orchestras fit into that uh, chamber orchestra environment is the perfect vehicle for my musical expression at this time. So it's, it's the perfect timing for me to engage these kinds of ensembles with the kind of ways that I'm thinking about music now. And it, so it's the most fortuitous event in my life actually. And to have the great opportunity of having as many as 60 ensembles engage this work will be just the most important kind of educational experience for me to hear how many different ways uh, the ensembles will consider this music. Uh, the whole process of, of bringing a new piece uh, into the world, uh, I think it's very much like having children. You know, you bring, you bring the child into the world and you hope you bring them up well and they lead healthy lives, productive lives. And I feel that way about my music in many ways, uh, that you bring these pieces into the world and you hope they're well considered by ensembles and treated well by audiences. <laughs> um, but for me, it, it's all about making the music. That's where the, the kind of exciting private time is. So that process of making the music is really for, I think, individual artists where the true satisfaction comes. But we do live uh, in an environment where other people have to make that come alive. It's not like creating a painting where you can invite your friends to come in and immediately uh, express their own views about it and say, here it is, take the whole picture in. I have to rely on the musicians to understand my musical ideas and how to bring them to life. So I know that I'm in a, in a cooperative collaborative environment, even though that special time is between me, initially between me and the notes. I always understand that there's someone else out there that has to be a part of that process to make it come alive. And then to close that circle with an audience who hopefully has some understanding of the kind of vocabulary and musical ideas that, uh, of the world that I inhabit to appreciate the result of the skill and experience of these musicians. So I understand all of, the, all of that and, and what's required of all of the participants involved. But at the beginning of the day, it's between me and the notes. 